So I just double tap down and the car immediately starts to take off. There was some, oh, take over immediately. Now here it's not getting in the right turn lane. You know, I think it's important to remain optimistic. I don't know why it did that. I don't know why it just beeped at me. You could have a bird that suddenly has a stroke. Telephone poles are irrelevant. Telephone poles are irrelevant. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. We're gonna see if full self-driving beta version 10.8 can take me all the way from my home to my work without any interventions or disengagements. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see if it's possible here today. I have two cars coming up on the left side of the road, so I'm gonna wait for them to pass, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. All right, here we are. We are all set to go. All I need to do, so I'm in my driveway. I'm not gonna to touch the steering wheel, and I'm not gonna to touch the brake or the accelerator. So I just double tap down, and the car immediately starts to take off, turns right out of the driveway, and now moving out to the main road, and then we're gonna see how well it takes us through a couple roads, it's about a 20 minute drive here, all the way to my office. I'm in full control, I can take over at any time. I am monitoring the system at all times. This is not level four, not level five self-driving. At the moment, it's incomplete and it can make mistakes. So we're gonna see here today if it can pull this off. There's been quite a bit of snow uh, that's fallen recently. We're waiting at a red light. It is clear to go on the left and there is someone up here turning left at this intersection. Okay, so now it should go. We are clear to go and it is not going. So either, okay, there now it's a green light. I was about to just intervene and there was some, oh, take over immediately. Okay, so it slipped on some ice and freaked out, put on the hazard lights and slowed the car down to a complete stop. So unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have a winner today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. Uh, there was a little bit of slip there and it freaked out, didn't know what to do. So uh, we're gonna have to try that again another day. <laughs> so, so much for that, but uh, hey, it was worth a shot. Uh, we're gonna see if it can make the rest of the trip here without <laughs> any issues. Oh my, so it's super sensitive. I've noticed there's all these little tiny intricacies that the software has. If it's raining, if it's snowing, if it can't see the lines, if uh, <laughs> there's moisture covering the cameras, you know, any number of things can affect how well it performs. Now here it's not getting in the right turn lane. It does this again and again. I'm gonna to have to take over once again. That's two disengagements or two um, you know, interventions basically. So now I'm gonna turn right here. It is good to go on this green arrow. It always misses that right turn lane and it has forever since I had 10.3. It has never figured that one out and it gets that wrong more than it gets it right, unfortunately. That's one pet peeve I have because I take this route all the time and it still can't figure it out. So to me, what that means is that it is not learning and it, it is also not learning from any of the reports that I provide. So I do have to be very careful here because it is slipperier, more slippery than normal. And I really don't trust the braking because sometimes it will come really close and then slam on the brakes. So I am being very cautious here right now. Uh, and it is in the far left lane for some reason, even though coming up here, we are gonna be turning right. Now with the new visualizations on version 11 of the UI, it takes up the whole screen, which is great for the driver. But what I've realized is for all of you that are watching what's going on, you have no idea where my car is going next. It does say here in two miles, we're gonna turn right. I think it's a lot more helpful though, if you see kind of the map here. But then what happens is the visualizations is uh, quite a bit smaller. So, I'm hoping that they improve that, they bring back the view where it's kind of like this and it takes up you know, three quarters of the screen. Now here again, it's slowing down at Roselle Road, almost to a complete stop. I'm gonna report this again. It really should not, cannot do that. And it does it all the time. I don't know why it's, you know, the map doesn't show anything unusual at that intersection. I'm just gonna zoom in and take a look here. There's nothing unusual there that would indicate that you need to slow down, maybe a tiny curve in the road. I'm not really sure why it would do that, but every single time it slows down right at that intersection. So that's three already in a very short period of time. Uh, not what I was expecting. I'm always super hopeful and optimistic that it's going to perform very well. 
but most of the time, unfortunately, it doesn't. Uh, so, you know, I think it's important to remain optimistic. They are rewriting the whole thing again. I mean, not, not that they're rewriting it, but they're kind of redoing it. Not, not as, as major of a of a um, engineering task at hand as, as was in 2019 when they had to rewrite everything. And when they incorporate, every, incorporate everything into a single stack, Elon Musk was saying that they're gonna be doing uh, a lot of new uh, a lot of new things for the training, for the neural net. So basically, the images that get captured by the cameras at all time, everything that gets uh, displayed here and tagged and and, um, and identified has been processed already. So the image is processed and then it, it gets tagged and, and um, uh, you know, meaning gets put in, into the images. Whereas in the new rewrite, I guess you can call it a rewrite. In the new rewrite, it's not tagged. I mean, excuse me, none of it, the images aren't processed. So I don't know exactly what that means, to be honest with you, um, because I'm not intimately involved with the programming. But the images, it'll be the raw images that get used right away, straight away. And then rather than having the, as Elon Musk referred to, the heuristics uh, processing it, which is basically the C and the C++ code, that processes it in the moment. Instead, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be the neural nets that translate and do a bunch of algorithms on the, the photons or the raw images. And I always thought that the neural nets <clears throat> were kind of in the cloud, not that they were inside of your car. And I know that there's a whole bunch of neural nets and basically it's, it's matrix math going on. I don't know if you guys took matrix algebra in college or not. I did, I was an honors calculus mathematics student at the University of Michigan, and I accelerated in math and continued throughout um, you know, all the courses, even through engineering. I was also really heavily involved with music in college. But the matrix algebra is interesting. It's, it's, it's complex. I mean, you basically take two different matrices and you you can merge them, and there's a bunch of math. It's not it's not the math that you would normally think it would be. Like it's not calculus, or it's not um, you know really really complex. It's, it's just it, it's bringing matrices together, and there's a set of rules. And then what happens is they create new matrices. So you you take like basically two different pixels, and the matrix portion of it would be the dimensions. And that's where you get into these vector spaces. So here again, it's not getting left soon enough. It always does that there as well. Uh, frustrating, because I've reported that every single day. I'm not even kidding you. Every single day, and it has not improved. So I really don't think Tesla is reviewing any feedback, to be quite honest with you. Wow. So. It it was almost gonna run that red light. It looked like the, it saw the green arrow and thought that was a green light. And it got really close and then suddenly slowed down. I could feel the um, anti-brake or whatever kicking in there at the end because it was a little bit slippery. I don't know why it did that, but it, I was ready to take over there. That was kind of frightening. But uh, essentially with matrix algebra or the matrix math that they're doing, you have these pixels and these pixels, or these photons, have uh, X, Y, and Z data to go along with them. And then they also have a gradient. You know, what, you know, how, how dark is it, how light is it? And then they, they take that over time. So then the time is the other factor. So with, with time, you know, the next snapshot they take, and it's just amazing just how much repetition there. I mean, just constantly processing, 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 non-stop. These camera, all eight cameras, and it's all eight of them. So you have this dimensional data uh, in combination with time to tell you a vector. So even if that object is not moving, but your car is moving, it still becomes a vector. It's like it's relative. It's moving relative to your car, but it cancel each other out. So that means that it's it's stationary. Regenerative braking temporarily reduced. I don't know why it just beeped at me. But what's fascinating is that 
you know, how do you detect a moving object versus a stationary object? Well, you have to cancel out your own movement. And that's where a lot of the matrix algebra comes in. So you, you have to filter out the, the biggest challenge I think Tesla has is filtering out all the stuff that doesn't need to be paid attention to. Because if you pay attention to every single thing, like if you're, ta if you're paying attention to that <clears throat> telephone pole or electricity pole, uh, you're using up memory that really doesn't need to be used. And it's, it's a waste. There's a limited amount of processing power that the computer system has. So the elimination algorithm is front and foremost. It's very paramount to the success of the system. And it's very challenging because, you know, you could have these edge cases. You could have a bird that is flying and suddenly has a stroke. And it's, it's falling from the air. And you, you normally would never take into account a bird falling from the air but hey it could happen you never know um, so then in that case what do you do you know do you try to get out of the way of the bird or I don't think the car has any ability to account for that right now and there's a lot of other things that go along the same line like uh, a telephone pole that that falls right you know right away now if you if it's lying in the road I think you'd see that object and that object then becomes front and primary but if it's coming that falling down from the side there's no way the car is going to say oh well that's a telephone pole and woo that's dangerous i need to get out of the way it's not it's not processing that because telephone poles are irrelevant right now to the code so all of these different objects that had objects around the vehicle it needs to detect to a certain degree um, and that filter that you apply is, is really important. And it's challenging, very challenging, to block out certain things. Because how do you know where the horizon is? How do you know where the sky is? How do you know what objects are stationary versus not stationary? I think that's relatively easy once you get the matrix algebra down. But the movement of a stationary object, an, the abnormal movement of a stationary object what, how does that get labeled? And, and how does the car react to it? That's the question. And it's really hard to, to account for those scenarios, I think. Okay, a vehicle here in front of me slowing down. Well, because of an emergency vehicle, there was an ambulance in the left lane there. Okay, so it slowed down just fine for that. And now we're gonna turn right here. So the right turn signal goes on, slowing down. Could slip here once again, I find out. Okay, and it accelerates forward. It was slipping just a little bit, but not enough to freak out again. So uh, we are here, There, that was unfortunately not a perfect drive. I'm hopeful that in the future we will have some of those at least more frequently than not. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.